Word of God. What a song, amen? Turn your Bibles uh, this morning to Psalms, chapter 128. Last couple of Sundays, it seemed like God has just been on me to... I, I've just been bearing down on a lot of things, and I know that on the love of God and the things that He's done. Today, I feel like God gave me a message. It's going to be a little lighter for us today. And You know, God gives different things at different times for different seasons. There's a time for all things. Uh, and I felt like that today, this is the message of the hour. Psalm chapter 128, read verses 1 through 6. Stand with me, if you will, and honor the reading of the Word of God. Amen. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in His ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be. And it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. And the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. God's talking about a blessed, happy home. Anybody want one of those? Ephesians 3, uh, 13 through 15, and it says, Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for, for you, which is your glory for this cause. Uh, it says, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. Now I want you to know when God talks about the family in heaven and earth are named, what a family reunion that's going to be. We love family reunions. Anybody like family reunions? You say, yeah, I hadn't argued with them folks in a year. Amen. See folks you hadn't seen in a while? You see some, you get family reunion like, oh, hey! You see some like, oh, no. <laughs> but family. Family. You know what? Family is, a, is an interesting thing. But sometimes you've got to laugh at your family. Amen? Sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. I'll never forget when Tyler come told me, he was a little fellow one time, he said, Daddy, he said, when I grow up, I want to be a Canadian. And I said, you want to be what? He said, a Canadian. You know, that makes people laugh. <laughs> I said, yeah, they do make people laugh. Amen. <laughs> you know, there's things that happen in your family that's just hilarious. They really are. And God gives us a sense of humor. In this passage which we read in Psalms 128 verse 1 and 2, he talks about kind of the, the what a godly father would do. And he talks about, he said, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, and happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. A dad that does right should be happy dad. You say, well, God makes you joyful, but not happiness. I don't know about you. I like happy every once in a while. Joy is nice. I'm not saying we ought to have joy from within, but happy is nice too. When we went on our trip, we stopped by in the airport and stopped at a burger joint in the airport. And they brought out... I told them I needed some ketchup, and they brought out a little paper plate and put two little dots for the red eyes and put a, a smiley face, and I noticed they'd done that for everybody. And some of you are like, oh, that's so-and-so. That's their brand. They do that all the time. But I said, you know what? It put a smile on my face. Just to, to know, I said, you know what? We all could use that sometimes. 
We live in a sin-cursed world, folks. We live in a world that is going downhill. We live in a world that tragedy hits on a regular basis. The Bible said that Christ was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. But they also said some things about him on the other side. But not only a good husband, it talks about a faithful wife. In verse 3 it says, Thy wife shall be as the fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. The Bible says a faithful wife is and a good wife that she'd be as a vine. You know, if you've got a godly wife, you better thank God every day. There is people out there that are wondering, that are hurting, that wishes they had a helpmate to be able to walk alongside them. If you've got that, you have got something to smile about. Amen? Men? Faithful. Why? Then it says something about thy children. It says, And thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. <laughs> I know at our household, there's always somebody around our table. We fight over who's going to get the stool and who's not going to get the stool and who gets in the chair that the screws is missing out of the bottom. I know y'all don't... You sit on it and it slides a little forward on the stool and but home can be a wonderful place. I read an illustration this past week. There's a man that, in this true story, he talked about, he said that him and his wife didn't want to go in debt, so they saved when their children was young and they, they raised all their money for, he said he wanted a, to redecorate the bathroom. You know, that can get some money if you really go in and, they wanted to go in and do all the tile and the marble and the, the rain showers and all the stuff. And, and that, can really, that, can, that can really cause, I mean, a lot of costs. Say amen, Brother Bill, back there. Amen. All right. But, <laughs> that, can, that can really get into something when you remodel a bathroom. <laughs> Just the remodeling period. Amen. But him and his wife, they... They, he said, man, I really want that. And he had saved and saved and saved and saved. He didn't want to go borrow any money. He didn't make a lot of money. He said, I really want that bathroom. And he says that it came time for vacation. And he said his kids come in and said, man, everybody else was going on a trip. He said, I, I wish we could go on a trip. He looked at his wife and he said, I guess we could use the bathroom money. He took the bathroom money and carried his kids. They went on a vacation. He said the next year rolled around after the vacation. He had started settling and saving and stuffing away again. He said next year come around and says, Are we going anywhere this year? <laughs> he looked at his wife. He said, I guess the bathroom money. <laughs> well, 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 I have to. And he did it again. He said, this went on. It got to where he said it was really a joke because the bathroom wasn't ever going to get remodeled. They didn't make enough money to do both. And, and he said, so every time he put away a little money to do that, he says, it was a year rolled around. It was time to do it again. He said, but his son went off and was, grew up and was in the war. And he said that his dad, he wrote his dad a letter. And he said, Dad, I don't know why I'm writing this letter, but I just want to tell you how much I enjoy and how much I, I loved our upbringing. You raised us right and taught us right. And you know what? He said our family time and our vacations we spent, he really meant a lot to me. And I just felt led to let you know and send him the letter. Wasn't but a few days later he got a knock on his door and his son had been killed in battle. He looked at his wife. After all the tears was gone, he looked at her and he said, I'm sure I'm glad that he didn't write in there what a great bathroom we had. You know, you cannot substitute time for money. When I was growing up, there was an older people on TV and I was just a baby, but Sonny and Cher. I remember... 
they was on TV. A lot of folks thought they was just a happy couple and they didn't make it. A lot of kids today would have Sony and Cher as their parents. <laughs> just a television and a chair. What is a family? It's a God-ordained unit related by marriage, blood, adoption. We choose family. You know, God has brought us in and adopted us into the family of God. He asked me what I was preaching on today, and I told him family, most likely. <laughs> I always put that most likely or if the Lord wills, because <laughs> that has been known to change. But I am so glad that God adopted me into his family. I'm saved. The little boy at school come home crying to his mama and said, Mama, Mama, said they said that, that I don't have a mama and daddy, that I'm adopted. <laughs> said, Darling, their parents were stuck with them. We chose you. And some of you today need to understand God chose you. He loves you. Brought you into the family of God. God created the family to satisfy the deepest longings of our heart. To give us the means to give and receive love. To propagate the human race and provide safe, secure environment to teach and love our children. We know happy and children. The, di the idea of a happy family is often made fun of today. About the only way on the sitcoms they show a happy family is when the children are disrespecting the parents, the wife is disrespecting her husband, trying to make him look bad or make him belittle him. That's comedy today. Dad has to look stupid. Amen. The children have to look rebellious, and that's comedy but I want you to know a happy family is so far from that. Happy family is so far from that. <laughs> we need to bring fun back into our family, though. Somebody said the, the family that prays together stays together. Somebody said the family that prays together and plays together stays together. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just need to have fun together just to have fun. The idea of a happy family. Somebody said a fundamentalist, a lot of them that we've turned into just funny mentalists instead of fundamentalists. We believe in the fundamentals of the faith, but it don't make you, it don't make you spiritual to walk around with a sour look on your face all the time like you was baptized in pickle juice. God saved you he give you a life to enjoy, not to endure. I watch Brent and them's Facebook times, and it's fun to watch them when they create something in the living room with boxes and youngins throwing something, and then it goes through. I can see the engineer and daddy playing with the kids. He like, you throw this and this, and then that turns into this, and it rolls down this and all that. You know what? But they're just making memories. Just making memories with kids. Some of the greatest memories that I have was not the big expensive trips. It was just the times of being with. My grandpa carried me out to the river and I was ready to fish and I was leaning over the river and the swirl holes in the leaf river about ready to swallow a boy up. My mama's up there screaming on top of the bank. Daddy, get that boy. He's going to die. He reaches out and pinches the back of my shirt and said, I got him. <laughs> Things like that, you remember things like that. You remember times like that. You, you, and, and as families, listen folks, don't let the devil rob you of time with your family to enjoy. The Bible says rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Husbands and wives, you need to enjoy each other. It's, it's fun just to have fun sometimes. Amen? Me and my wife got to go see Jimmy the other night, grandson, in a um, 
show choir thing down in Hattiesburg. My son sent me a thing, said they was going to show choir, and it was going to going on at 10.30, and I sent back, in the morning, right? And he went, no, at night. What? But you know what we did? We load up, we take off all the way to Hattiesburg for a 10.30 at night show. It was Friday night. For some reason, Saturday morning, I was tired. I see Dick and Jane have their grandbaby here, and my goodness, I've seen, I've seen as much of your flips on Facebook as I do my own youngins. Amen. You do good, by the way. I know they are just proud of you. Listen, folks. God has given us family. Laughter is a gift from God and a happy family. Winston Churchill's immortal words said, We fight on beaches, we fight on the landing grounds, we fight in the fields and in the streets, we fight in the hills. It sounds exactly like our family vacation. <laughs> Psalms talks about it. Psalms chapter 45 and verse 6 and 7, it said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right sepulcher. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. The oil of gladness. Gladness. God anointed us with the oil of gladness. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 said, A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Now, if I started dancing, it'd be a time to laugh. I dance like Bill Cosby on the Cosby Show. I've got rhythm when it comes to singing. I've got rhythm when it comes to music. But when it comes to movement, I have no rhythm. You know, there is a time to weep. There's a time to laugh. The Bible says in Luke 6, 21, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are they that weep. goes on to say that we will laugh. Huh. Family fun refreshes. The Bible says in Psalms 127, verse 2, it says that our mouth is filled with laughter. You know what? Family fun. We was thinking a lot of that, and I was telling my wife, and I was looking at a lot of things, and the Bible says in Proverbs 17, verse 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. You ever seen anybody with a dry spirit? Lee Robertson called them death givers. That's what he called them. He said, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And he says, but I call those people death givers. He said, when you get around them, you just feel bad. It doesn't take long. You feel like you ought to wash it off. You feel like there's something there that you're just like, I don't want to be around that kind of folks. I want to be around life givers. I want to be around people that make me want to do better. I want to be around people that make me want to serve God. I want to be around folks that it's time. I know there's a time to mourn. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to dance. Your family ought to be a happy time. It ought not to be, oh no, daddy's home. It ought not to be, oh no, mama's like that again. It ought to be a time to laugh. It ought to be a time for joy. Home ought to be something they look forward to. A place of refuge from this old world. A place where they feel safe. A place where kids can be kids. That mom feels safe. That dad is somebody you want to be around. The devil tries everything he can to destroy your home. A little boy named Danny one time, somebody at church told him, said, Son, 
I know your family lives in an old travel trailer. <laughs> he said, don't you wish you had a real home? <laughs> Danny's reply was, he said, we have a real home. We just don't have a house to put it in. Home has nothing to do with what you got. It's not the size of the place. It's not, it's not how nice the carpet or the flooring is. Some of the happiest people I knew is some of the poorest people that I knew. I heard a lot of people say when they was growing up, they didn't know they was poor because nobody told them. They just thought that was life. But those times as a family, fun times. Sometimes mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, cut the TV off. Just spend some time. The devil is trying everything he can to assault your home and destroy it. And the world's telling your kids the only time it's fun is out there when they're drinking and drugging and, and, and out having illicit affairs and sex and things outside. Listen, folks, the home ought to be a place of refuge. I like our opening text when God says about that home, when he says about that what will happen. In our opening text, he says, he said, he said, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine in the sides of thy house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord, and the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yeah, thou shalt see thy children's children. He's telling about a man. This is the psalmist David writing to Solomon, telling him, saying, Hey, if you'll do right and live right and enjoy things that God gives you, it'll come back to you. You can end up enjoying those things. I've told you about before the stickers on people's car ask me about my grandchildren. You don't have to. They're going to tell you if they get half a chance. Family fun. The Bible talks about the family. Our mouth being filled with laughter. I wrote down a couple of things and I said, you know what? It's just fun to have fun sometimes. Joy and laughter are medicines to our body and our soul. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 25, heaviness is in the heart of a man that maketh it stoop, but a, a good word maketh it glad. <laughs> you know, we just need sometimes to lift each other up. Some of the best times that I have in my memory that fails on a regular basis are memories as a kid playing in the yard digging to China. When God desires us to have three homes, church home, family home, and a heavenly home. I'm glad that I have an earthly home. I see a lot of folks that don't have an earthly home. And I've been blessed to have an earthly home. but I'm blessed to have a church home. Some people say, I don't see a reason to have a local church. I do. It's family. You feel like family. Family don't always get along. Say amen. But you feel like family. If you have a need, you feel like there's somebody that cares. But most of all, your heavenly home. Every view I ever think about heaven, I hear children laughing in my mind. There's something about listening to children laughing. I know there's going to be praise and worship around the throne of God, but I'm sure glad there won't be tragedy. I'm glad there won't be any more hurting. There won't be any screaming. There won't be anything. There'll be noise, but it'll be good noise. It's something about listening to a baby giggle. Amen? And the things that they think are funny 
are just hilarious. They'll see a little dog go woof, and they'll just, <laughs> and the dog will sit there half a day and go woof, and they'll, <laughs> and you just look at it and you go, that is not funny. And before long, you are dying laughing. God give us a church family, but one day all the God children will be drawn together in one family. I'm glad for that day that I'll get the ultimate family reunion. See, so they come to Jesus and told him, they said something about his mother and his brethren and them that's without, and he said, He that doeth will of my father the same as my father and my mother and my sister and my brethren. You know what? Sometimes the family of God is closer than your own family. They are. Now, I know some families are different. Some family, you mess with one, you, you mess with them all. But God meant it to be that the family is something that we should have to be able to enjoy each other. Do not get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Because when it's over with, you look back, you'll wish you'd have had more than times around the kitchen table together. You'd have wished you had more times in the yard raking together. You'll wish you'd had more time in that Sunday school class. You'll wish you had time to sit down and read your Bibles together. You'll wish that you had time to put those things in them that you wanted to put in them. You're here today. Some of you had a lot of effort to be here today. Some just woke up and went, I go to the house of God. Some of you, the devil has tried everything possible to keep you out of the house of God this morning. I mean, it was that day you woke up and everything in the world went wrong. I meant anything and everything. But you're here. But I can guarantee you, you'll never regret when you stand before God the time that you put in to your spiritual life with your spiritual family. If you are not part of the family of God, I want to encourage you. Come on over to our side. I'm not talking about Hopewell side. I'm talking about the family of God. You'll find a heavenly Father that loves you more than you'll ever know. You'll find a God that'll never leave you nor forsake you. That'll hurt when you hurt, but they'll also will put a joy in your heart from time. You'll find things that He'll laugh about. You say, well, I just don't see the importance of it. It's important. As we minister together and we work together, it's good. I like that I feel the presence of God. I like that I feel, I've been places I don't feel like I belong. You ever been there? But I feel like I belong. We encourage you to be part of the family if God brings you our way. If not, we're going to love you anyway. We're going to love you anyway, because that's what we do.